takes us to concrete. Without concrete, there can be no stamped concrete. Concrete is the base on which we build the entire stamped concrete experience. Concrete is one of the toughest materials in construction and also has been in use for a very long time. We use concrete in making bridges, we use them in building homes, we use them in making decks, we make, use them in flooring. Originally, they are used in flooring. Ordinarily, concrete is gray, like the color you see here. When it dries, it's gray. It's not colorful, it's not shiny, it's not as beautiful as we want. So what we are doing in stamp concrete is enhancing the ordinary look of concrete from this to various colors with various shine and various patterns. So basically you need concrete to do stamped concrete. Concrete is a mix of Portland cement, fine grains, usually sharp sand, or, and coarse grain aggregate, usually granite stones. I recommend using the three quarter an inch, three quarter of an inch granite stones. If you want to buy granite stones, if you are the one handling the concrete yourself, you would need to buy three quarter down. Three quarter down, you can write it somewhere. Three quarter down granite stones. So when you call your granite stone supplier, you tell them you want three quarter down. That's three quarter of an inch down. Nothing larger than that. Because anything larger than that will show through your concrete and it will make it impossible or difficult for your stamp mats to leave good patterns on your concrete. And it will give your concrete a rough surface, which we don't want which is not useful for us. So the largest grain size of granite you use in making the concrete for stamped concrete is three quarter of an inch down. You can use half inch, you can use one quarter of an inch, but it should not be more than three quarter of an inch when making stamped concrete. Now they are used in specific ratio. Specific ratio means that you have a ratio of cement to a ratio of sand, to another ratio of granite stones. We'll talk about more on concrete and the specific ratios required later on in the course, but just for you, you to understand all the tools you need before we go to explain how and what to do. More on that, uh, we'll talk about more on that later on. There are two ways to get concrete. One is by paying a batching plant, like we did in this project. You pay a batching plant, they mix the concrete, they come with a ready mixed concrete to the site, and give it to you to use. Another way is for you to buy your sharp sand, buy your cement, buy your granite stones, then use a mixer, a mobile mixer or a hand mixer, whichever way is convenient for you to mix it, add a little water, then you mix it and take it to your site to pour into your formwork. This is a square pipe. We use it for the formwork in this place. Now, concrete can be done reinforced or not. If you're going to be having heavy duty vehicles, like this kind of trucks now, driving on your concrete, then it's advisable that you place reinforcement rods. These are these iron rods. Yeah, the the iron rods you could call you call BRC wire mesh that you could use, or you could also use normal Y8 and tie it. Get your iron bender to tie it and place it on the floor as your reinforcement. The reason why you need reinforcements is that in some areas, concrete might have voids under it. And if there are voids under it and there are no reinforcements, it's easy for the concrete to break or to crack later on, months after you finish your installation. So to prevent that from happening, it's advisable you use reinforcements when you are going to be having heavy duty trucks drive upon these Floors. The reason why we are doing the reinforcement in this floor is because this is a park, a public park. And in a public park, we have trucks, 30 ton trucks, 50 ton trucks driving upon it. We don't want the floors to fail. So we are putting a reinforcement suspended with uh, concrete cubes to make the concrete reinforced and tougher. This is the concrete being laid. After you pour the concrete like this, you see them pouring the concrete, you have to spread the concrete into the entire form, the way it's being done here. The man in this picture, when the mouse pointer is here, is placing the brick under the reinforcement. Usually there's a mistake most people make. Some people that are not too experienced in uh, 
construction, they place the reinforcement directly on the floor and just pour the concrete over it. That's a very grave mistake. You don't want to do that. The moment you begin to do that, you are going to be defeating the purpose of the concrete being reinforced. Reinforcement is supposed to be like sandwich. You know, when you're making a sandwich, you have your bread, you have butter in the middle, then you have another slice of bread. So the reinforcement is supposed to be the butter in the middle of the concrete. If you put reinforcement on the floor, it's the same thing as putting no reinforcement. In fact, you have just wasted the reinforcement. It's not going to do any job of holding the concrete together. So it's very important. Most professionals in concrete know this, but for you, it's very important for you to know this. Don't ever go to a site without suspending your rebar. The rebar is this reinforcement now. You must suspend your rebar such that there's concrete beneath your rebar and there's concrete above your rebar. The rebar or the reinforcement or the iron rods are in between the concrete, not above the concrete, not below the concrete. The rebars must not be seen on the concrete and must not be visible underneath the concrete. The, the, the danger about this is that if you do a bad job, no one knows. The only truth is that it will show after some months. By the time a heavy duty vehicle comes upon it and it begins to crack and give way, then you know that you did a bad job. You didn't suspend your rebar with cubes like it's been done in this picture. So it is very important that you suspend your rebars with cubes as he's doing in this picture so that the concrete can go underneath, can seep underneath the rebar and sandwich the rebar like butter in the middle of bread. I hope my analogy is very clear, but we will talk more on that uh, later. This is just an overview of concrete. In the picture, you see the man using the magnesium float. If you've been following me very well, you know that what he's using here is the magnesium float to smooth in the concrete. You can see the formwork already in place. This is the formwork. This is the reinforcement. This is the man smoothing the concrete that has been poured. And that's basically what the concrete is about. A mixture of sand, cement, granite stones, and water. When it dries or hardens, it becomes a permanent feature of that surface or that terrain. It's difficult to break, difficult to remove, doesn't wear out when it's properly done. So that's that of concrete. We'll talk more on concrete later on in the course of this lecture. I see a video of people making concrete, measuring out concrete for those that want to do the manual mixing. But if you are going to be buying from a, a, a batching plant, you don't need to bother yourself about that. All you need to worry about is pay for the concrete volume that will be delivered to your site, bring it to you, and you use it. I know a lot of you want to know how much you need or estimates and all that. We'll get to that at the end of this course. We'll talk about estimating the materials you need to cover uh, an average of 100 square meters, 50 square meters, like that. Usually, it is relative because the amount of concrete you need depends on the thickness of your concrete. But we'll be able to give you a precise information about the other materials. So, um, that's the end of this lecture. I'll see you in the next course. And bye-bye uh, for now.